I'm standing here at the 900 level of the Greenback Mine, Josephine County, Oregon, where if uh, historical records are correct, uh, over a hundred million dollars worth of gold came out of this tunnel uh, back at the turn of the century and uh, a great deal of people worked here. And this is uh, timbered at it by a, a well-known uh, mining engineer from Cave Junction. Uh, put all these timbers in here to reopen the old workings. We notched them all nicely. Oh yes, yeah, so they're like actually wedged job instead here. of just yeah. nailed. Yeah, yeah, see it's all uh, uh, interlocking. Uh-huh. The uh, Puzzle pieces, huh? Yeah, this is very, very... Uh, uh, so you even had to put boards over here to hold them in, but now you don't need those anymore because all this fell down. Very nice. Uh, there's still probably lots more gold in the hills. A little company I worked with, Southern Oregon Gold, sampled around in the mountains, found a lot of gold and uh, possibly some extensions to the vein and we're uh, trying to raise money to uh, do further exploration, but uh, the fact that it's in Oregon has made it very difficult because uh, Oregon has a, a reputation for being very uh, uh, unfriendly towards mining. We had 10 people working on exploration here, and if it ever did go into production, there'd be quite a few more people working. The problems with uh, dealing with the permit system is while they're doing studies to determine if you're going to affect anything, uh, eventually you go broke waiting for the study to be complete. Quite often somebody will sue and say we need to do more studies and eventually it just turns into a giant study and nothing is ever produced until the company that came in originally uh, just walks off and does something else. They go to a place where people want to produce things instead of just do studies. Here we are in Rocky Bar on the Rogue River. Uh, this is below a famous mining area in Galice and has some of the best recreational mining uh, opportunities. Just about every pan you take has gold in it, but it's now it's uh, illegal to pan the gravel in this gravel bar with a gold pan or use a shovel or move a rock. If you're not mining then it's okay. You can uh, move rocks to get your motor home around or whatever. And every time there's a high water or flood water all this gets washed over with uh, you can hear boulders rolling down across the top of this bar. But if a person was to go down there and uh, and tip a rock over and dig underneath it and put that sand in a gold pan and walk down to the river, that would be illegal because uh, this is in the scenic corridor and they don't allow people to uh, uh, pan for gold on the banks of the river. You can't use a shovel, but you can pan for gold in the river if you dig with your hands in the river. So uh, this would typify Oregon's mining laws, saying we're not really stopping you from mining, we're just saying that uh, uh, you have to uh, use your hands and not disturb the ground. I uh, worked for the state of Oregon Department of Geology and Mineral Industries for 37 years, starting in January 1 of 1952. From 1951, I believe, till 56, they actually, the government bought domestic chrome, metallurgical grade chrome ore from the miners in this area and they purchased a total of 200,000 long tons. There was once a small smelter right at along the Rogue River, just below Galice, where they were taking ore out of the Almeda mine. And uh, it still has a pretty good reserve of silver ore, gold and silver, but mainly uh, silver. And the Benton mine also has a good reserve of gold ore. At one time, the Benton mine uh, hired more had more employees than any other um, activity in Josephine County. Perhaps the greatest value in mining 
metal mining in the state of Oregon was the nickel mine at Nickel Mountain near Riddle, Oregon. They took out millions of dollars worth of nickel ore, and that was actually the only producing nickel mine in the United States, right here in Oregon. The primary reason that there's very little mining is that the regulations brought on by environmental restrictions and uh, the uh, inability of the mines to operate efficiently. The, the ore, for example, at the Benton mine is amenable to the use of cyanide to extract the gold from the crushed ore and they can get very good recovery. It's being, cyanide is being used in many of the successful mines all over the country, especially in Nevada. But I think that the, the term scares people they, because they know it's poisonous, but it can be done without causing environmental damage, but that's hard to, to get most of the regulators to believe. Constantly we need industrial minerals, sand and gravel, crushed rock, and that will continue. And that is something that is difficult quite often because you're competing with other activities and people don't like sand and gravel trucks running by their place and making dust and noise, but we can't get along without industrial minerals. They have to find ways to zone it for that activity, I think, and, and uh, there's usually a, a lot of debate involved, and so it becomes a little discouraging for anyone to try to develop a mining operation. What we're doing here today is gathering and uh, small-scale sampling. We're all looking for a little bit of a deposit, but we're raising money uh, here today to donate to um, uh, those people that fight for our rights, miners in Southern Oregon, miners in Northern California and Washington. Placer mining is a little bit different than hard rock mining as we're not digging a tunnel into the mountain. What we're doing here is adding a little water to this uh, dirt and rocks and we're running it down into this sluice box. These gentlemen here are actually dredging. We call it dry land dredging or high banking. We're adding water to the, the dirt and the rocks and sucking it up the nozzle so it can go through the dredge where you know, sort the uh, heavy gold and other uh, valuable minerals from the dirt and the mud. Gold is 19 times heavier than water, about six times heavier than anything else around it. So it falls into the holes in the sluice box and later on can be sorted out and separated. The sluice box incorporates the same things that's been used for 150, 200 years. The gold goes through the sluice box, is knocked down by this mud flap and uh, falls into a hole which is caught and stays. So as the rocks and the mud go through this, the heavies will fall out, being gold, silver, platinum. And then later on, they'll clean this up pan out the gold, clean the gold, and uh, sell it at the local mining shop. Here I am on the side of an old riverbed, and what I do is I take tools and I work the dirt off the side of this riverbed because that's where the gold gets stuck, is in this dirt, and so the dirt will fall into my pan here. This is what we call concentrates. So you can take these concentrates back to your camp and then you run it into water and you pan it. And that's where you find your gold is in this concentrate. I have this little tool called a bullseye. And what this is, is if it touches gold, then it will give a little buzz. And that tells me that there should be some gold in there. So we'll just run it through this concentrate. And if there's anything gold in here, then it should give a buzz. Okay, so we'll look right there. There is a nice little picker of gold. You got some gold? I got a little picker of gold right there. 
Yep, that's gold. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this gravel that I found in the creek right here, and we're putting it on top of a little classifier, and we're gonna wrench the big rocks off. That's what we're doing. Any gold that's bigger than this, we should be able to see, hopefully. Luck helps. And then any rocks bigger than this, especially on this creek, we want to make sure that if there are any nuggets that big, that we see them, that we grab them, and uh, put them where they belong. Now the rest of this, we're just going to gold pan. And what we do is we shake the gold pan a few times, make sure all the dirt is just liquefied and uh, not stuck together, and then we're going to back it out the water and let it rinse off the light stuff. And as we begin this, we want to make sure if there's muddy water, we get rid of the muddy water. But we're just going to back it out the water, rinse that light stuff, reclassify and stratify it and get a little watery and flat again, and then just repeat the same process. Now, rather than waste our time and take it all the way down to see a few specks of gold, we hope, we're just going to flatten it out, get the right amount of water in there. We're just going to flatten it out, shake it, spin it, and what we're looking for is little tiny pieces of gold. Yes. Oh my. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> 